Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me okay? Okay. I want to thank Pastor Carmen for having enough confidence in me to allow me to be uh, assigned to be your local missions representative for the Church of God, Allegheny Valley, on Catalpa Street. Um, it's something that I feel has always been on my heart. Uh, Kathy and I first went on a mission trip when our kids were still little. We went to Mexico back a long time ago and uh, I think that's what first got me to a place where I felt like it was uh, something that I believe God was calling me to do. Um, I feel like maybe I have not been obedient in a lot of uh, situations where I believe I've been called to do other things and um, because of the way I am I always have to have all my ducks in a row before I can go do things but slowly I believe he's showing me that he's in control and when he speaks I just need to be obedient and so I just wanted to share with you a little bit tonight about uh, the last trip that I, I went on, I was able to share with you back in February uh, when I came back from Haiti. Uh, this trip was something that I, I'm not even sure how it all came about. Um, uh, so uh, before I share, let's just open in prayer. Father, we thank you that you love us, you care about us, but you also want us to look beyond the doors of this church, whether it be in our own community uh, or in the city. Um, uh, but you want us to see the big picture that there are over 22,000 uh, people groups in the world and uh, your command was for us to go into all the nations. So I just thank you that this is a new beginning for Allegheny Valley Church of God and that we can uh, start to look and to see uh, the things that we can do as a church on Catalpa Street to further God's kingdom. So we thank you. We offer this evening up to you and uh, just pray that uh, your blessing would be upon this new, uh, uh, new, this new thing that we're going to try to do here at our church. That you be glorified in and through it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, back when uh, Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast, um, uh, Brother Dick Samuels, who most of you know, just called me up one night and said, let's go to Mississippi. And I said, well, I have to pray about it. So um, he, uh, we continued to talk about it. And, and at one point, I just believed that I just decided to take a step of faith. I was working by myself at that point. And so before it was all said and done, we had 10 or 12 guys and we had to rent a van and we went to Bay St. Louis and uh, uh, did a lot of renovations to people's homes there. We spent a lot of time um, in prayer and uh, intercession. Uh, many of the residents there came to know the Lord um, before we left. And then uh, uh, a few months later, we made another trip back down and so um, a couple weeks ago, or maybe more than a couple weeks ago, six or eight weeks ago, I got a call, or I got a text from, with this new technology now, you don't get a text, you get a call, you get a text. And so I got a text from a lady named Wenda from California, who was in Bay St. Louis at the house where we stayed, and she took care of doing laundry and uh, cooking and buying groceries and stuff for us while we were there doing the work so we didn't have to be concerned about that uh, those uh, things and so she just texted me and said there's a guy in Alabama that needs some showers and without a lot of information uh, I texted her back and I said well what do you mean she needs showers and so we never did talk on the phone we just texted back and forth which you know, by the time you text back a half a dozen times, you could talk for two minutes on the phone and have it all over with. But that's the way people do stuff nowadays. So 
Anyway, before it was all said and done, I found out that there was a man named Lance Rao, who was originally from Mississippi or up Minnesota or one of those states that begins with an M up there in the middle of the country. And he was in Alabama. Uh, he went to Rainsville uh, right after the tornado. And if you remember back in, uh, I think it was the last week in April, um, there were 327 storms that went through the southern states. And uh, there were thousands and thousands of people that were left homeless over 300 people, around 300 people lost their lives. And some of those uh, tornadoes were what they call an, an F4. And uh, this tornado that went through Alabama and parts of Georgia uh, was a mile wide and went for about 33 miles. And you know, as Dave and I were driving down, we saw places where there was just a little huddle of houses you know, just a little town. And then on either side of this little huddle of houses was just miles and miles and miles of trees. And, and we just wondered why the tornado hit that little huddle of houses and not just hit all the trees that were miles and miles on either side. So anyway, I finally got in contact with Lance uh, through computer or we talked on the phone. and, and uh, uh, Lance, um, somehow they found out about him and uh, 23 or 24 years ago he lost his job, then he lost his apartment, then he lost his vehicle and he had nothing left uh, but his God, Father in Heaven. And so he at that point gave his life completely to serving the Lord. He has seven children that he delivered, each one himself. Um, he's trusted completely in God's provision for everything. And he just goes from disaster to disaster helping people. Um, one thing that I thought was sort of strange, the, he told me that uh, the only pets that they ever have have been opossums. And uh, I just thought, but maybe for down south that that's not such a strange thing. But, you know, when you talk to somebody on the phone and you see them in person, they're completely different than what you expect. I sort of expected a clean-cut guy, but when I got there, he had hair down past his shoulders and a, and a big beard and, and uh, uh, just looked like a, a rough biker guy. Um, but he just really has a heart for the Lord. And so when he told me on the phone that uh, when he moved into town to start to help, he made contact or acquaintance with this gentleman that owned a bunch of property in town and just so happened to have a medical clinic that uh, was up for sale and vacant. And so there was about 20 exam rooms and a nice big foyer area they call a waiting room and a bunch of bathrooms. But they had no showers. They were taking showers with garden hoses. And uh, so I asked him if you know, if we would be able to come down and put some showers in if he would like us to do that. And certainly he thought that was a great idea. So I proceeded to just pray and ask the Lord how I would go about doing this. After a couple of weeks and you start to think about, okay, is it really worth me to drive all the way down there just to put a couple showers in and do some other stuff? And, and so I said, okay, Lord, well, so I asked a, a local plumbing supply house that's in town here if they would be willing to donate any fixtures or faucets or anything, shower stalls that I could take down there. And a week or so went by and I got no response and, and I talked to the manager and he said, well, he called a bunch of people but didn't get any response from anybody one way or the other. So I said, well, could I have some phone numbers for the Kohler district rep and the Delta. I already knew the Delta guy, so I called them up and I called Kohler and the girl said, well, you mean you want these shower stalls for free? And I said, well, whatever you're willing to do. And he said, she said, well, I don't know about for free, but I'll talk to my boss. And so a couple of days later, I got a, an email back from her saying, tell me where you want to pick up the shower stalls. My boss said that you can have them for free. And so so I got three nice 36-inch Kohler Sterling shower stalls. I called the Delta rep out in, uh, he's out in Bridgeville. I said, RJ, do you think you'd want to contribute uh, some faucets to 
for me to take to Alabama, and he said, sure. And him and I have had a good relationship uh, for other stuff in the past, and I sort of knew that he would do that, but it was just a blessing that he uh, was able to, without hesitating, say, yeah, whatever you need. And so, uh, so then uh, I talked to Dick Samuels, and I said, hey, Dick, want to go to Alabama? He said, yeah, sure. So uh, he was in the midst of his radiation treatments for uh, his prostate cancer. And he asked them at the uh, clinic where he was getting or wherever he was getting it done, he said, well, you could miss a couple days and then tack it on at the end. And so uh, we were starting to make plans to go. And a couple days before we were ready to leave, Dick said, I can't go. My doctor got wind of what I wanted to do, and he said, no, he doesn't want him to miss any of his radiation treatment. So just, uh, I have a friend who's a plumber who's local, and he lives in Upper Burrow. Him and I, um, his name's Dave. He was here, um, him and his family were here after we came back from Haiti. And um, so I was in the truck with him one day. I don't know what we were doing. I said, Dave, hey, Dave, you want to go to Alabama? He said, well, I'll ask my wife. And so a couple of days later, he called me back and said, yeah, I'll go. And so, so at that point, then, it was pretty much set. All we had to do was get our stuff together and throw it in a truck. And I told Lance that we weren't going to be able to come because of our uh, responsibilities here t at this point, since it was such short notice to come down for a week and stay. So we decided that we would drive down on a Thursday and install the showers Friday and Saturday. And drive back on Sunday, which we were able to do. And uh, so uh, it was a real blessing to, um, again, to be with other believers that just give up their time, their money. Uh, they just abandon their regular lives. And, and, you know, like Pastor Carmen said, I don't think that, that it was a an accident that his messages last week and this week um, prefaced what I was going to share tonight. And so um, for me, and I'm sure for a lot of these other people, what it comes down to is they don't put any stock in anything of the world. Um, they don't care about uh, stuff, as Pastor Carmen said, and I don't like stuff either. I have too much of it. and. You know, if I could get rid of some of it, I'd be glad to do that. Uh, but, uh, so Dave and I uh, were able to drive down. We left about 4 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, and we drove down and got in there at 6 or 7 Thursday night. On, um, uh, thir on Friday, since we had all the materials with us, we took the lumber to frame them and everything with us and didn't really have any idea what we were going to find there, but, you know, most buildings are built similar, even though down south they do plumbing a lot different because they don't have to worry about it freezing down there. So we were able to uh, uh, get the showers, two, two nice showers installed on Friday. Uh, we were able to get them two washing machines hooked up so that they could do laundry. And, uh, and even on Saturday, uh, Dave went out to a lady's house um, to help to put siding on her house. So, there was a lady that um, she had, God had given her a vision that there was a tornado going to hit Rainsville. And she had like a ranch house that was set on a foundation with no basement. It was like just a block foundation. And uh, she told us that at one point, uh, once they knew that the storm and the tornado was coming, told her to go into her hallway and so when you walk into our living room, there's just a big open living room kitchen area. And then you go down the hallway to the bedrooms and the bathrooms. And uh, so her and her family, her kids, went into this little hallway and just stayed there till they could hear that the storm was gone. And when they opened the door from the hallway, that whole half of the house was gone. And the half that they were in was still there, um, even though the half that they were in had lifted up off the foundation and moved, but at least it was still there. Um, the devastation, I, 
I must uh, apologize for not being very good at taking pictures this time uh, of my trip. It, it was so quick and so um, full of just our time was taken by so much stuff. We didn't have much time uh, to relax and to really fellowship. We did spend time each morning uh, in devotions and prayer and worship. Uh, that was one of the requirements of of Lance. So, uh, but. Pastor Carmen, I think, uh, has a couple pictures that I did was able to take, and if he wants to start them up there. Um, this building, uh, when I had to take a trip to go to Lowe's, there was a Lowe's in another town that I was going to get some materials, some faucets to replace. Um, that was some kind of sports museum, and I know that you can't see it very well, but there was a metal roof on there, and the whole metal roof is gone. The, the other metal heavy structure is still there. Um, and But if you can, I don't know if you can see, but you know the corrugated metal roofing that they put on buildings, it, it was completely taken off the building. All the metal siding, if you can see right into the building, all that was taken and thrown all over the place. I promise I'll get a better camera for the next trip. Yeah, you can see it a little better there. That area there was all windows, and then that that was metal roofing there that's all gone. They said that you can't imagine the how strong the wind is in the middle of that tornado. It doesn't compare to a hurricane where you just have wind and rain pushing against stuff. But a tornado... 200 mile an hour winds inside a funnel. Um, they just said you can't imagine. We saw big giant oak trees that were just twisted up like toothpicks. That's another picture of that sports uh, museum. It just shows some of the siding there and that uh, just got blown away. Yeah, right there. Some of the pictures, the couple of them I have here, I wasn't able to pull over anywhere, so I had to just sort of stop on the side of the road to take up some of the other pictures that I have. I think that one place you can see right up through the building, up through the roof, that bright spot there. Yeah. That house there, um, I don't know if you can see if he can bring it in a little closer. That was across in the parking lot. But that that house, the whole roof is completely off. And I don't know if you can see some of the trees, how they're all twisted up and blown over. It's just so amazing that, you know, th these pictures I'm taking are, are just this this one swath going down through um, and then just a couple hundred yards away there's houses and buildings that weren't that didn't seem to be touched or affected by the tornado yeah that's a rainbow that's the building right there that where that trailer is to the left that's the building that where we stayed and that's where we put the showers um, Friday afternoon Dave and I were at the building by ourselves and all of a sudden we heard a, ye a lady someplace yelling uh, for Lance and uh, I ran outside and here the sky was black and this was like three or four in the afternoon maybe not even that late it was so black we thought it was almost night and she told us that we needed to find Lance so that he could get all the workers that were out in the field working at people's houses and get them back to the building because they were calling for a storm with a tornado. And um, I didn't really have much concerns. Dave sort of had a fearful look on his, on his face. The only thing I could think of was if our truck got blown over to into the next county, I was just wondering how we would get home. So this, this uh, rainbow was after the storm had passed. The sun was out, but it was still raining. And so that was uh, 
that was the rainbow that we saw at the end of that. And if you remember, I think it was in Genesis chapter 8 where God promised that he would never destroy the earth again with water. Is there any other pictures in there? You didn't get any of the shower pictures I sent. Oh, okay. No, that's all right. That's okay. They know what shower stalls look like. <laughs> Dave and I were able to install the showers without breaking up the cement floors and everything. We just put them up on a platform and ran the drain over and dropped it into the floor. We used some plastic pipe to hook it up and so we were able to get them two nice showers in, uh, in one day. And then uh, Saturday, Dave, like I said, went to uh, put siding on a lady's house and I spent the better part of that day replacing some sink faucets and fixing toilets. There was half a dozen toilets in there that weren't working and uh, so we were able to get that uh, building to a place where they didn't have to worry about a high water bill. So um, I'd like to share a little bit now, just a little bit more. I know you saw the video um, there that Pastor Carmen showed about the mission uh, program through the Church of God, which is the church, the denomination that we're affiliated with. Um, a couple months ago, uh, you know, we have the, the magazines back there that Pastor Carmen puts out. But I happened to see this other one that's called Save Our World, and that's the mission uh, magazine that's put out by the Church of God. And last month, uh, or two months ago, there was a, an article in there about local mission representatives and I just believe that uh, I got sort of excited at that point uh, and I asked Pastor Carmen if he would allow me to be um, appointed your local missions representative and so I was able to do that and I got a packet of information from uh, Cleveland, Tennessee and by the way as Dave and I were driving down to Rainsville, Alabama we were able to see we went right through uh, Cleveland, Tennessee on our way down there so I waved to the overseer when we were going past and uh, so um, so I asked Pastor Carmen and I, I filled out a form and mailed it in and uh, sure enough they sent me a packet and uh, you know in the, these scriptures were already up there on on the video that Pastor Carmen uh, showed, but in Matthew chapter 28, you know, at the end before Jesus was went up into the air, he said, "All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age." You know, Jesus commissioned his his disciples and uh, I believe that as part of his family that we're also commissioned to in some way be a part of that great commission which is to make disciples of all nations you know um, the word nations means people groups and I think I already said this but there's like 22,000 people groups in the whole world and you know that's part of God's kingdom and in Matthew chapter 24 uh, verse 14 it said in this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations and then the end will come so you know thinking about that um, I think it is time for us to be more aware of what's going on outside the doors of this church and so if there's some way that I can help you do that or help facilitate doing that, that's what I would like to do. There's, there's a lot of information that I got in that uh, folder. Some of it, a couple things I just want to share with you tonight. And I don't want to keep you too long. But um, they actually sent me a report of what the Church of God did last year. And if you don't mind, I'd just like to read you a couple things. Um, it says, every day throughout 2010, more than 1,000 people were won to Christ in World Missions Ministries in 180 countries around the globe. And I know 1,000 people doesn't 
sound like a lot, but that's just through the Church of God denomination. The Great Commission instructs us to make disciples, and evangelism is not enough. Conversion is not the final result. We must make disciples, men, women, young people, and children who will commit to a Christian lifestyle and dedication to follow Jesus daily. World Missions concentrates on developing disciples who will pray, practice stewardship, and mature in their faith. In the year 2010, um, they provided training for people that accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They had over 50,000 cell groups in different places. Over 300,000 new believers were baptized. And over 15,000 local churches conducted Sunday schools and children's ministries so that they could develop uh, to bring up these young people. Uh, they have... Uh, they had uh, Church of God missionaries. Um, they uh, taught new believers to be pastors. Uh, when they planted a church, then they need somebody to uh, to take over that church. So they trained uh, these pastors to take over the churches. Um, right now, uh, our church has over 300 missionaries that are under appointment all over the world. Uh, the Church of God supporters provided almost five million dollars for their support so part of what you give in your tithe um, a percentage of that goes to the main office and then supports some of these missionaries but like pastor Carmen was saying it would be I just feel too it would be nice to have a more personal relationship with one or two of these missionaries we we support Penile which is here in Pennsylvania and the other two that you mentioned and so um, I guess I'm going to find out more what it means for me to be your local mission representative in the next few weeks so that when summer's over and everybody's done with vacations that we can start to have a missions program where we uh, spend time whenever Pastor Carmen and I decide uh, if, whether it be monthly or bi-monthly that we can become aware of what the Church of God is doing in the world. Um, they have women's ministries, they have uh, uh, volunteers in medical missions mis uh, ministries, they have uh, youth world evangelism, which um, they, they said that uh, in here, what that is is, is that the, the youth in our country get involved in this and they raise funds so in the last uh, it says half a century young people in our country since 1961 have raised 30 million dollars for more than 50 significant home and foreign mission projects all over the world operation rescue for orphanages um, and more locally uh, we have something called men and women of action right now I don't think in Pennsylvania that's in place but uh, it says in here that the men and women of action teams have worked on churches in Managua, Nicaragua, Honduras, all over sounds like mostly South America, some in Africa that sounds like something that I believe I don't know just in my heart that's something that I would like to do men and women of action because you see there's a picture in here with guys up on a roof doing stuff I like to do stuff and so I just believe when God called to go to Alabama, um, he worked out all the details and all I had to do was just move in obedience. And whether it seemed insignificant to me and Dave, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people in the next few months that will be thankful to be able to take a warm shower after they're out in the heat. I've been sort of monitoring the, some of the weather that's been there the last few weeks down in Alabama. And it gets pretty hot down there and it's humid when we were in Mississippi it was all these little black bugs and so it's not a great place to be there to work um, but but it's just so nice the fellowship with other believers other men and to be able to spend time when we were in Mississippi it was mandatory that we spent the evening in prayer and worship and it was just really a blessing um, and uh, just to put a plug for Thursday night too. Thursday, this past Thursday was the first night that I came out for prayer and 
I want to encourage you to come out. It's really, uh, I don't know why I have taken so long. I kept telling Brother Jairus that I was going to come, and I just never did. But it was such a blessing to be there with Pastor Carmen and Lil and Sister Karen to just intercede for the people that are either suffering physically or uh, just stuff going on in their lives that uh, is just a challenge. And you know, God's in control of all this and He knows what He's doing even though it may not look like that to us. And you know, sometimes we're the ones that we feel like we want to step in and try to fix things, but He's He's the He's the one that's going to take care of the lives of all the people that we lifted up in prayer. Um, last but not least, there's hundreds and thousands of homeless orphans, kids all over the world, and these these children have been either just neglected or some of them have been, have been sold uh, into slavery, you know, just uh, into work, working for other people. Um, the Church of God actually has more than 135 orphanages that serve those needs. And so there's so many things that we can look at as our church here in New Kensington that will help to further God's kingdom. Um, in the weeks and months to come, I just hope to be able to uh, pray with you and, and share together uh, and see what God would have us do as a church. Um, we can't save the world, but we can save a little piece of it, you know, um, by being the light and the salt. Anybody watch Dr. Stanley today? Uh, his message today uh, was about, you know, whether you are going to have an impact on the world. And he calls us to be salt and light. And, you know, we have to be awful careful about sin. If you mix dirt with salt, it's no good. If you have an oil lamp and you turn it up too high and the globe gets all sooty, then it doesn't light. And so, you know, we need to make ourselves available, but we also need to, uh, God calls us, he says, be holy for I am holy. So we need to watch sin in our lives. We need to um, repent, turn, run away from it. And, uh, and, and be available. So I hope uh, tonight that I just planted some seeds of, and, 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 and seeds of encouragement too that uh, sometime in the next few weeks or maybe by the time uh, the kids are back in school, the Pastor Carmen and I and anybody else that may be interested in being a part of this um, missions, I, don't know, I guess program is what you'd call it, um, that we could at some point um, be able to say that we're a part of spreading the gospel and furthering God's kingdom and um, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic but um, and you know sometimes I struggle when we look in our own community right outside these doors there's so much need and, you know, Sister Casey, uh, she has talked about planning an outreach in the community, and that can be part of our missions program, or missions, whatever you want to call it. But um, that's why the body is made up of so many different arms and legs and hands. You know, everybody feels that they're called to do, you know, I, I don't know if I can say that I'm called. I just know what's in my heart. And so I guess that's a calling. And so the next time somebody calls me up and says they need a shower or a toilet or whatever, I'm sure that something will tug on my heart and that I'll be ready to go. When I came back, I was so blessed. My son, Josh, who is starting to be groomed to take over my business, um, he, I see this little list, this post-it note on his desk. And the one at the very top says, Benevolence Fund. Then the next one is, I'm not going to say her name, but there's a little old lady in Lower Borough that has a house that's fallen apart. And her, her church tries to help her, but I don't think they're doing a very good job. And so she's second on the list. And so I don't know what the rest of the list was, but 
When I came back from Alabama, he said, Dad, we ought to get a trailer and get it ready so that the next time something like this happens, all you got to do is throw stuff in the trailer and hook it up to a truck and go. And, you know, I believe God spoke to us, the group of guys when we came back from Mississippi and we got together a couple times and but nothing ever came of it and so that's where I feel like at some point you know I or we dropped the ball when we should have just kept pursuing that and 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 like Pastor Carmen said I know if we would have stepped out and done that God would have blessed it big time you know and I think he'll bless our church I know he'll bless our church when we step out and begin to do the things that he's called us to do and so I just thank you for listening tonight. There's a lot more stuff that I'd like to I'd like I'd like to share, but I don't know if we have the time. Um, one of the things that Pastor Carmen put in the back there, and, and you can begin to look at these. These this is for the state of Pennsylvania. What, remember uh, Ken, Kenneth Bell, who came on our anniversary last year and spoke here. Well, there's an introduction in here from they call him Bishop, Administrative Bishop for the state of Pennsylvania. This is, this is called a mission coupon book, Engaging the Missional Mandate for 2011-12. And in here you'll find um, a description that he wrote in here about what is God saying to us today, what's he calling us to do, where are we going, and who is going with us, and how will we know when we have arrived. You can read that for yourself. There's a pile, pile of them back there on the window. So, and then, you know... It says, my missional mandate participation, you know, how am I going to participate in this by either sponsoring uh, financially or praying for one of the missionaries. And there's about 16 pages in here that have uh, some of the missionaries that are, have been sent out through the Church of God. And there's projects towards the back. Um, there's an addiction. Oh, that's Penile. Um, and then there's another, a couple other ones where... Uh, they need a photocopier in the Philippines. Um, there's uh, AIDS clinics. There's motorbikes for Bra pastors in Brazil. So that they, because of their home churches are so far apart, they, I know in Africa, we just sent money for bicycles, but I guess they're up in the world here in Brazil because they're using motorbikes. But you can buy a bicycle for about $50, where these, it says in here, about $2,200. So, um, and then a van for Chile. There's a pastor in, in Chile that they need a van for their church to make hospital calls and evangelism calls and stuff like that. So on your way out, grab one of these off the windowsill back there. Um, I'm going to try to get more information. There's a lady named Judy down in Cleveland, Tennessee, who's the local missions representative. representative. And she has a toll-free number that we can call, an email address, and I'm going to be in touch with her this week to see if I can get some more of these uh, brochures and some of the uh, uh, Save Our World magazines. Usually there's only one or two back there. I'd like to see if we could get some more and, and so that I could make it a point to send them out. It, 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 it really is uh, such a good... Um, resource to let you know what your denomination is doing uh, in the world. This was the one from winter and spring, so they must do it every quarter, and this was about rebuilding Haiti, and um, there's a to-do list of stuff that needs to be done, and um, just um, here's an article. I'm sure there's articles, testimonies of things that God's done. His ways are not our ways. And uh, then it just gives you some information in the back here about things that are going on all over the world and in memory of people, missionaries that have uh, gone on to be with the Lord. So, well, I want to thank you for listening tonight. And I just want to look at my notes to see if there's anything that I wanted to share that I maybe forgot. I think that's all. Um, so just be praying for me and Pastor Carmen and that we can just do God's will in what I think God is finally bringing to fruition here at Allegheny Valley Church of God 
and I'm excited. Um, I, like I said at the beginning, I sort of drag my feet on this. I'm just always so busy, but um, I just got to keep seeking first God's kingdom and allow him to take care of all the other stuff in my lives. I'm so blessed to be able to have my son and my son-in-law and my daughter starting to take over my business and uh, so maybe that's God telling me it's time uh, to move forward with some of the stuff that he's put on my heart over the years and so um, there's nothing else Pastor Carmen do you want me to close in prayer or is there something you want to share okay